Hello. I'm gonna make a quick uh, little video about uh, using a manual tuner, how to tune up, and uh, and uh, how to use a manual tuner. So I have uh, my flex here set receiving on 80 meters, and. Uh, as you can see, the noise floor is very low. That is because my antenna is currently tuned up for something like 20 meters, I think. So you see the S meter up in your uh, top right. Let me get that to focus. Hello. You can do it. There we go. I'm showing uh, like a S1, S2 on the S meter. Very low noise floor. Um, so, here is uh, my tuner, manual tuner, um, there's an inductor here, then you have an output capacitor, it's an air variable, and a, a lot of times they'll call this the antenna capacitor or the output capacitor, and the input capacitor, which is sometimes they call transmit, transmitter capacitor. All right, so um, you also have a range selector. This particular tuner will do 3,000. Uh, it has a 3,000 watt range or a 300 watt range. Peaker average, on and off, just turns on and off the the meter. One thing about manual tuners, you don't have to have them powered up for them to work. Um, they just are an LC filter and they just work. Uh, so you put the it's a little dark, let's see, there's your coax switch. You can have direct, which is like bypassing the tuner, or tuned. I'm on uh, the balance line antenna here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the capacitors. Just choose one. like this and you can hear the noise getting a little bit louder I'll show you uh, actually I think a better idea would be I'm gonna put the caps right in the middle okay both the caps right in the middle now this is the inductor you can see it has a turns counter if it wasn't so dark, you might see it better. There you go. So that's 24 and a half turns. As the number goes down, you actually get more inductance. So let me show you what happens with the S meter. Um, I'm going to spin the inductor down. As the match gets better, the noise floor increases. So we're up to like a five S5 noise floor there. So it's really easy to show you. There I've gone past past where it might match. With this flex radio you can see. So what you want to do is you peak the noise. So you can do that with your ears, you can do that with a S meter, or on this radio you can do it visually. So I got a, uh, a value of about 18.6 or so on the uh, inductor. And that's just counting the turns, it's, it's no real electrical measurement, it's just a turns counter. Now I'll uh, adjust the caps and we'll let's watch what happens. This is the output cap. Look, and take it all right back away. So it's peaked just about right there. And then the other cap. You can actually see it roll through and. Alright, 
so there it's peaked okay that's five all right so then the final step is to uh, put some RF into it and um, on this radio I just throw a carrier with the tune button all right a lot of people have heard tune up into a dummy load tune up into dummy load well they're talking about amplifiers you can't tune an antenna tuner into a dummy load that doesn't work so what you do when you're tuning up an antenna tuner is you just put in just enough RF to show you what you need to see it says high SWR I'm gonna turn my drive down to like 15 my meter says 10 to 1 and then you can see here showing a lot of SWR on that so then you just play with it a little bit you've got it close look I'll turn that output cap a little bit and it comes down showing two and a half there two and a half to one let me turn the input cap a little see what we get if you start going one way and it gets worse then don't go that way just kind of lower that reflected needle as much as possible I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to work with the inductor and everything here and you know this antenna just may not want to tune up real good in this one spot sometimes that happens As you can see, I'm kind of just working back and forth and working that reflected power down. This one's a little touchier. I mean, that's really a good match. See, that's, that's under 2 to 1, about 1 1.6 to 1 right there. I'm putting out about 10 watts here. Nobody's on that frequency, so I'm not going to bother anybody. But you just want to work that reflected needle down. I'm going to do the inductor now. I got it to 1.3 to 1. You can also watch the meter on your radio. If the SWR goes up, you're going the wrong direction. Sometimes you just got to find that sweet spot. So that's it. We turn off the RF carrier. I'm tuned up here now. On 75 meters, noise floor is louder, as you can see, and that's it. That's all there is to it. And that one actually took a little bit too long. But what I do is I write down my settings. So here's my first capacitor, the input capacitor. There's my the bands that I work this antenna on. There's the input capacitor, the output capacitor, and a turns counter on the inductor. I write that down, and it gets me close, you know? It's not always uh, going to tune up exactly the same every time, and sometimes you're, depending on where you are in a band, you'll be a little bit higher, a little bit low. This says, for this antenna, on 80, 95 on the input, 33 on the output and 19.9 on the inductor and what I actually have is about 60 60 about 32 or 33 and 18 point six and a half so it's a little different but if I were to put put this number these numbers into my tuner I would have been close and it saves me from peaking the noise and everything I could get close with that and then after you get close with that you just uh, put your tuning RF carrier in there and uh, and and just lower the SWR if you don't have a tune button that sends a single carrier out that you can adjust the power on you can put your radio in AM mode um, and that will send a carrier in AM mode you have a carrier 
and it's usually for a 100 watt radio you have about a 25 watt carrier so that's a reasonable level to uh, tune the antenna with you can turn the power down a little bit more than that if you want but um, full power out in AM with a 100 watt rig is usually about a 25 watt carrier um, if you have your microphone hooked up and you're in AM mode and you key the radio and you're transmitting then your microphone is going to pick up whatever audio it hears and it'll be transmitting that audio in AM mode so if you want to be just a carrier then unplug your microphone put it in AM mode hit the transmit button and and then do your tuning turn off transmit switch back to sideband or CW whatever and and then go uh, and hook your microphone back up if you're a CW guy then all you need to do is just use your paddle turn the RF back uh, you key down the, the keyer and uh, and tune tune the tuner um, pretty simple so that's it that's all there is to a manual tuner uh the big deal is uh just play with it don't be afraid of it can't hurt you i really love uh, manual tuners because um once they're set they're set if you're on a frequency and you set your tuner um it's not going to change unless you change it so I i've had automatic tuners in the past you get going on a frequency, doing whatever you're doing, talking to a friend or uh, calling CQ or what have you. Um, and a tuner maybe decides it doesn't like the match it gave you and it's going to give you a new match. And people tell me, well, you got to put it in a different mode or what. I don't know, man. It's an automatic tuner. I, I didn't like it, so I got rid of it and went back to my manual tuner. I'm a manual tuner guy, but uh, I mean, automatic tuners work too. Uh, they break, they uh, they cost more, they uh, don't, sometimes you can't tell it what you want, you know, you can sometimes still manually adjust an automatic tuner, but what's the point in that? If you're going to manually adjust it, just have a manual tuner. I don't know. I'm not a big, huge fan of automatic tuners. People like them, they do great. I mean, some people, that's what they need. For me, I like manual tuner. I get the match exactly where I want it to be. You know, I, I know I'm tuned up, and then that thing's not changing its mind. It can't. It, it, does, it doesn't have a brain, you know? It's just a dumb box with some knobs on it. Can't change. Uh, so I like it, you know? So anyway, grab yourself a cheap manual tuner. You can get a, like a used MFJ 969 with a roller inductor. I, I'd prefer... A roller inductor if I was going to use a manual tuner tapped inductors are okay but then you're limited on the inductance you can select with a roller inductor it's continuously variable throughout the range of the inductor itself so instead of where a tapped inductor you's, you've got you know eight or ten inductances that you can use with your capacitances it's just not not as versatile so you, you may not be able to get that match and that's a lot of the way, uh, very similar to how a lot of automatic tuners work. You got uh, a selection of inductances, the relay is clickety click clack, and there's your induct. It says, okay, we're going to go with this inductance, and then it's like clickety click, and all right, there's our capacitance. Well, okay, it's not continuously variable, and you can't control it, so. It is what it is. You know, some people like it, some people love it. They say it's faster, blah, blah, blah. Write your numbers down in a little book. Dial them in. Throw a carrier, touch it up. Go on with your life. It's not, it doesn't take that long. So, uh, and most of the time, if you're on a band, you're working your way up through 20 meters, say, you're on that band, you can tune the radio up, the antenna tuner up in the middle of the band, go down to the low end, you have a good match go up to the high end you have a good match tune it up once work your all way all the way up through the band you might you might get a, a 1.2 to 1 right smack it like 14 225 or 250 somewhere like that and then you go down to 14 150 if you're an extra and you work your way up the band working everybody in the contest you know getting all that dx 
and but down to 150 it's closer to two to one maybe or you know on 20 it might just be i don't know yeah two to one whatever that's fine you go down there you work them you're working your way up as you get closer back to 250 where you tuned up the match gets better and then you pass 250 and it slowly gets a little bit worse but you don't have to retune every every 3kc or something if you got a good antenna that's what's known as like a broad antenna where the match is nice and broad if you have a sharp antenna and you do have to tune up every 10kc or something then the best idea is not get an automatic tuner so that it'll tune up for you every 10 kc but find out why your antenna is so inefficient because it's really sharp at that point you know so anyway that's my little uh spiel on automatic tuner uh, manual tuners it's actually a a rant anti-automatic tuner rant isn't it but i i like manual tuners that's how you use them grab one get a cheap one stick it on your radio play with it it becomes very easy and you'll find out just how easy it is and and i think you'll like it but hey man some people don't like knobs we can't all be uh we're not i don't know i won't say that <laughs> uh but uh yeah there's knobs i had to have knobs somewhere in the shack because you know i'm running a flex radio i i got a knob for it right here VFO knob, but I needed a couple more knobs to play with, so there you go. I got my manual tuner. It's a really long, long video, but uh, somebody asked me if I'd talk about manual tuners on a net tonight, and I figured uh, I would do that, um, but I'd also do a little video demonstration. Um, that's it, man. I, you know, that's all I can say antenna tuner that's an antenna tuner <laughs> all right 73 this is aj4tw catch you again next time